This particular report that we're talking about is specifically focused on the outcomes from the national quality indicators. The reason it's significant that we're speaking about this now is because it's quarter one data, July, August, September. This data is still in the process of being crunched at the government level and we're lucky enough to be having an early insight into the performance of our members, which I think we calculated about a third of the industry. We've written up a little report here where we can start to look at some of the indicators and what we're seeing in the performance across our client base and you could compare that to the wider industry. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the consumer experience index and that's one of the new indicators. That's a survey. I always think it's interesting getting feedback from people themselves and their families. So I think that one's a really interesting one to look at. We're looking at an average score of 74.87% with 81.98% of ratings falling into the good or excellent categories. That's awesome. So we can see that consumers are looking very positively at the services they're getting in terms of that feedback. That's what we're seeing there. And when we look at the trend analysis, we can see there is an improvement. So consumer experience is going up. That's a new one. So we'll look at that trend in coming quarters. The second one I wanted to look at is quality of life index. So that's the second survey, high at 88.69% with impressive 82.58% of ratings being good or excellent. So that's even a little bit higher quality of life. The quality of life is an important measurement. If they, their quality of life is good, then that sounds like good news. It is. Absolutely it is. I think the other thing is that these are things that need to be celebrated across the industry when they're achieved, just as when negative things are encountered that we deal with them appropriately too. This should be no surprise in terms of importance. I've put staff turnover as the next one. We're looking at current quarter performance staff turnover at 5.16% across our data. So that's kind of relatively low. I'm surprised at that. I wonder if our client base is maybe dealing with the workforce issue a bit better than some others, but that's speculation. I can't prove that, but that seems quite low considering what I'm hearing going on out there. After everything that's happened in the last couple of years, that is a very positive metric. Obviously, there's been a lot of struggles with retaining staff and getting new staff. So that's got to be a good sign. We don't want people moving and chopping and changing, especially when you consider a care home is somebody's home. It's not an organisation, it's not a building, it's actually that person's home. So when you've got a stable workforce, that means a lot to people who are being cared for to see the same person caring for them and kind of to have a family around them. So in addition to that, you've also got people become familiar with the work environment, with the policies and procedures, they become a valuable member of that team. And when somebody leaves, you don't just lose the person and the hours, you lose all that knowledge and information as well. Like I said, I'd look at that number with a little bit of caution. I'd really be looking out for the industry data on that one. I'm hearing a lot of issues attracting staff as a separate or side-by-side -side issue. The next three all go together. So falls total, falls with major injury and falls without major injury. So they're three separate indicators, but they're certainly related. Falls total, so current quarter's performance, we're looking at 32.02%. If we look at the trend analysis for total falls, there's a slight rise in the falls. If we look at falls with major injury, the current quarter's performance are at 1.51% if we look at the trend analysis, the rate of major injuries due to falls has remained stable. And if we look at falls without major injury are reported at 30.51%. A trend analysis for that, while number of non-major injury falls is higher, the stable rate of major injuries suggests that these falls are being managed effectively. So we've got a third of people falling, but falls with major injury are 1.51%. So actually the majority of the falls are occurring with no major injuries. Interesting data there. Again, it's one of those ones that people might say we should have zero falls, but there's a balance between allowing people freedom of mobility and the potential for higher levels of falls. And that's what we're seeing. It seems like we've got a good balance of being well managed between giving people freedom and also making sure that those people with freedom, when they do fall, they're not majorly hurting themselves.